and welcome back. I am envious of Taylor driving down Hippo Pools roads. It's one of my favorite roads on Juma. So lots of happy memories from there. And like Taylor said, we are lucky in that we do have a few species up here that the guys down at Juma don't see and vice versa. This being one of them, the Thompson's Gazelle. I love them because they're always wagging their tail and remind me of a happy Jack Russell. Yes, you look kind of Jack Russell-like. Oh, photo bomb! Awesome. I didn't plan that. And what a pleasant surprise. Huge male giraffe just popped into frame. So we'll drift off from the Tommies and move on to this majestic giraffe. We could actually see this giraffe from the main south camera, and it's now popped up to the main north camera, which is a little bit further upstream. And he's not alone. There's another bull following him. There's two of them meandering along the river looking for snacks. And they've actually been around quite a while. This is one animal that would be interesting to see cross the river because they really do battle if there's any slippery rocks. And if a giraffe falls in a stretch of the river where there are slippery rocks, they often cannot get up, which obviously creates quite a distressing scene because it can take quite some time for the giraffes to die. And then it also can be tricky because the predators battle to be able to actually get to the kill sometimes. Well, that's in areas where there's not gigantic crocodiles like here. So I guess they'll make short work of this beast if it were to slip. But let's not think about horrible thoughts of a giraffe <laughs> slipping in the river. It is a reality though. I know he's a male because he's got no hair on the top of those two horn-like structures on his head. Let me see if I can get you a little bit closer in there to what are called the ossicones. Oh, hello, Paula. Um, I certainly agree with you. You say that he's looking very majestic, so I'm just tweaking the focus there manually. And I agree, he did look like a king patrolling his lands. He is a dark specimen. You get slightly lighter specimens than him, and I prefer the dark ones. They do look like they are the most majestic. Marvelous. Okay, let me zoom out and see what else is happening. Hello to Lisa. You would like to know what one of the most exciting things is that Juma does not have. Uh, I'm going to tell you two things. I'm going to tell you what I miss the most about being not being in Juma, and I'm going to tell you one of the things that I love the most about being here in the Mara. And the Mara has allowed us to do some different things, one of which is spending nights out with animals, with infrared and thermal imaging. The thermal imaging we're using more just to help us locate the animals instead of using a spotlight, so it's far less intrusive that way. We are hoping that we can connect a live feed from the thermal camera so you both get a thermal feed, which picks up obviously any hot images or hot things, as well as an infrared feed, which is a low light camera essentially, or that can operate in infrared light. And basically this has allowed us already some really interesting insight into what the animals get up to after dark. We followed five male cheetahs from sunset until 11 p.m. on a pitch black evening, no moonlight to assist them. So I think we are gonna debunk quite a few myths. We're gonna get to the bottom of questions like whether migrations do happen. Oh, sorry, crossings do happen. We do know the migration does happen. So, that's one thing that I love about here, the night's out. I mean, guys can do that in Juma, but not as easily as we have access to here. The other thing that we are greatly fortunate is the amount of land we get to traverse here. We get to traverse huge amounts of land. Oh, sorry, uh, Kirsty, are you with the zebra? Let me go back, whoopsie. That, the, the joystick was controlling itself there. Let me zoom in on the zebras, sorry. So that is uh, one of the main things that I love about being here the freedom to explore a massive traverse and be able to do it after dark. Hello, Zebbies. Are you thinking about doing a crossing? We would much appreciate that. It would be very exciting. We will be shouting for you all the way. The crocodiles have had enough to eat. Now, one of the things that I miss the most about not being a Juma is the ability to walk on foot. 
The bushwalks are one of my favorite ways to be able to take you guys on safari. So I really do miss that. And then another thing which I guess is related to being on foot is that you see they're quite far from the crossing. So it looks like they're just making their way upstream those zebbies. Another big thing that I love about uh, being on foot is that you can actually track animals. Whereas here in the Mara, tracking animals is not very feasible. There's just so much grass, so few areas where there's sandy patches to actually follow the tracks. And there's a lot more rules here, different rules that don't allow us to be out of the vehicle. So I'm really missing the art of tracking, walking around on foot. It's one of the most exhilarating things you can do. And often when we're driving around here and I hear that Tristan or Taylor or LA are on leopard tracks or lion tracks, I am hugely envious. But the plan is that we are all going to share um, the joys of both locations and people are going to be able to take turns in coming up here and vice versa. And that way it's going to keep us all fresh. Oh, wrong way. I'm going to drop down like that, a bit too much. Sorry about this, guys. As you can see, I need some practice. Hello, Tudor Anne, who's just five years old. It's wonderful to have you on safari with us. You're wondering if the hair on the giraffe's horns is soft. And yes, when there is hair on top, it will be soft and fluffy. I guess I've never actually felt one's horns, to be honest. But the females have got a tuft of hair, whereas the one that we can look at, we're looking at now is a male, and he's got no hair on the top of its head, which is often similar to us as humans. The old men go bald, and the women still have hair. So it's the same with giraffe. And yes, there is a little tuft of fur on top that I'm guessing will be quite soft. Okay, well, it sounds like Tristan's found something interesting. I didn't copy exactly what it was, but hurry on down and have a look for yourself.